turn to your neighbor and say, are you ready to get your praise on tonight? Nothing is impossible. Yeah. Come on, put your hands together. I believe, I believe 
here.
receive the fresh wind of His Holy Spirit tonight. Hallelujah. Somebody might say something like this. I need you to breathe. Spirit of God saying before you came into this atmosphere you was feeling very dry like Ezekiel 37 dry bones seemed like when you tried to pray it was tough to pray when you were trying to get in the word it just seemed like you. you didn't really be able to get into that word. Church became something I got to do rather than I get to do. And even in your relationships, you've been feeling that dry bone experience. God says he's speaking life to you. He's prophesying to you. I said, God is prophesying to you, not me, not no one else. God is speaking life into you because he's breathing on you and your situation. God says he's giving you a new wind. He's giving you a new wind. He's giving you a new wind. That you're going to be able to now break any stronghold any hindrances that wind is so powerful it'll bring about, about deliverances yeah. God says whatever you need in this kind of atmosphere you gotta learn how to reach up by faith yeah. and snatch it for your own life this is not for your children this is not for your husband it's not for your wife This is for you. Because you can't. My God. I'm thinking about that plane that's going to a certain atmosphere, a certain, a certain height. And they tell you, you know, the stewardess, they tell you that if the plane goes down, you need to put the mask on you first and then your children. Come on. Come on, preacher. You're going to a certain atmosphere, you can't even breathe. And so you need to put that mask, that, that, that air mask on and begin to breathe what God is offering in this atmosphere tonight. Yeah. Whoa. I hear the Spirit of God saying the words that will come out of the preacher tonight, they're going to be filled with God's wind. And it depends on how you believe will determine how you will receive that word that will come into your life to breathe upon your situation. Oh, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory. God wants you to right now hunger for him. And I just want you to just right now close your eyes and lift your hands. 
Tell God, I want you. Say, I need you. Say, God, breathe upon me, upon my situation, upon my relationships, upon my finances, upon my church. Breathe. is literally given some people who were about to commit suicide had contemplation on their mind God is changing that situation and he's literally given mouth to mouth resuscitation to that person because that person tried to die in this life I'm not talking about really they were trying to give up on this life and God is giving you right now mouth to mouth resuscitation you shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord That's a good word, Pastor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we just bless you. Thank you, Lord, for just giving us just a little of you right now, which is more than enough. Lord, we have now faith of the expectation of something even coming greater later. Thank you, Lord. We receive the breath of God tonight. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God a real hand clap. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, clap your hands like you're slapping the devil. Hallelujah. Clap your hands right like you're taking something back. Come on. Hallelujah. We bless you, Jesus. We thank you. Woo! In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead and if you can, amen, be seated at this time if you can. Amen. My God, just stay right there. You never know what the Lord might have. You guys can, amen, go ahead. You can't go nowhere. You're on, you're on time out right now. <laughs> well, bless the name of Jesus, amen. Have y'all enjoyed the atmosphere so far? Well, praise the name of Jesus. I, I just want to thank God because I get to you know, stand before you. Not really, you know, as a pastor, but as a brother to my sisters and my brothers. Amen. And I get to, you know, at this time, experience what my wife had in her heart, in her soul for a very long time. Amen. My wife, has, Pastor Kim, has helped me birth at least three churches in our lifetime. This is the third church, amen? And that's, it's just ironic, I'm just thinking about it. we got three children too, so you have, you, hurt, you helped to birth three children, amen, as well. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for that. And now, she gets to, amen, be launched out into her ministry. Amen, you gotta, you got to be faithful in another man's vineyard before you have your own. And because she sowed so many seeds for so long, the harvest is on the way. Praise God. And, and you know, this is, uh, this is harvest time. This is the season of harvest. And uh, I want y'all to keep the same expectation on you because... I just got to get the offering in the way, okay? Amen. But I don't want y'all to lose faith. You don't have to start going to the restrooms and stuff like that. <laughs> you don't have to do that, amen. Just, because you might miss something. 
How many of you got full-time jobs? Full-time jobs, okay. Part-time jobs. Full-time and part-time jobs. If those, if your boss told you that after two weeks of working, that he just wanted to give you a nice little certificate for working all those hours and a pat on the back and tell you thank you for being such a great employee. Amen. I know y'all Christians and everything, but I, 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 I don't even know the best Christian that would be upset about that. I Amen. There's a scripture in the Bible that talks about communicating with the teacher. It talks about communicating. That whole verse is dealing with sowing and reaping. The Bible says God is not mocked. Whatsoever you sow, you shall also reap. That's in a good sense too. But since we're dealing with the atmosphere, how many know that your communication should not be thank you and a pat on the back or I had a good time. Your, your communication should be sowing with money. Say money. money. The Bible says you sow in the spirit, you shall also reap from the spirit. This spirit is owned by the Holy Ghost. Owned, this atmosphere is owned by the Holy Ghost. This is his atmosphere. When you sow into the spirit, you're going to reap from the atmosphere. You're going to reap from the spirit. You sow to the, excuse me, you sow to the flesh, you're going to reap from the flesh. One of the ways you sow into the flesh is that you go in the Macy's or Walmart and you, you say, I got to have that. I got to have that. And you sow, you pay money, you sow money into that to get that because you want that in your life, right? That's sowing to the flesh. And we can see the benefit of even sowing to the flesh at times. But sowing into the spirit is when you give into the word of the communicator. And you do it by faith before you even receive it. Come on. You sow into this worship. What happens is it reciprocates back into your lives. Everything that God intended for you to have, you will have because the Lord owns everything. Come on, somebody. He owns everything. So you got to know when to plant, when to water for your harvest to come. This is the atmosphere to sow into. Amen. This is the time to plant for your harvests, for your dreams to come to pass. Amen. So I'm going to encourage you right now to get a seed in your hand. Get a seed that makes a difference. The Bible says you sow sparingly. You sow small, you reap sparingly. You sow bountifully, you also reap bountifully. I'm encouraging you to sow what you want to receive. Amen. You don't want to receive nothing, don't receive. Don't sow nothing. But if you want to receive something in your life of spiritual descent, of spiritual magnitude in your life, if you're looking for something to happen, not just spiritual, but financially, because you, the seed is will produce of its kind. But on this seed, not like your job, not like working for somebody, this seed produced not only financial reciprocation, but also spiritual reciprocation. So what I want to do is encourage you to give to Kim Ministries. Amen. Write your checks out to Kim. K-I-M. And uh, for some of you that did not come prepared to even bring cash in the thing, now we got five ways to give up in this house. Amen. We make we make it easy for you to give because we want it to be easy for you to be blessed. You can write it by check. You can you can give it by cash. You can swipe it by kiosk. You can text it by phone. I'll give you that number in a minute. And you can click it by the internet. Come on, somebody. <laughs> No excuses. Say no excuses. No excuses. I, like I didn't have it on me, man. I just didn't have it on me. 
<laughs> no excuses. You can go to the internet. In fact, you can look on the back of your seat. There's some envelopes right there. You go ahead and get those envelopes. Amen. And you go ahead and... and where's... Uh, okay, we got some right now. Hold your hand up, amen, if you need an envelope. Amen. We're going to go ahead and... The envelope, on the envelope, we got the website. I think we got the website on the envelope, or do we? No. Look look on the back of your, your, your chairs. You've got the website. If you don't have it today, you go to the website. After service, you can go to the kiosk. And we'll have somebody right there at the kiosk to help you to swipe it. Amen. Um, so we want you to definitely, amen, take the time to think about what you want to sow to the Lord, what you want to sow into this ministry, Pastor Kim's ministry. Every bit of it will go towards helping her and her ministry be launched out here. This is just the start. She will be going, traveling, doing the work of an evangelist, ministering in different places. If you want to be a partner also, you can be a partner with her in her ministry as well. You can do that at the kiosk. You can actually start a partnership with her as well. Amen. Let's bless it in Jesus' name. Father, we just thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you for what you've already done, what you get to do. Lord, this is worship as well as we give unto you. We, we never stop for offering. We didn't stop for money. This is all about worship. Giving is worship. Amen. We have not stopped the word. As it comes forth, it will be worship. Worship is worship. So we bless you, Lord. Now, Lord, by faith, we sow. We sow this $50. We sow this $20. We sow this $100. We sow, Lord God, $500. We sow it by faith. We sow this $1. Whatever it is, we sow it by faith. We trust you to reciprocate it back into our lives. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I just thank you, God, for these offerings, these gifts, these seeds sown. And Lord, I just pray, God, that you would return to them not a hundredfold, but a thousandfold return in their lives. In the name of Jesus, be a blessing to them. Amen. Amen. Oh, you can move this to the side. Eyes closed. <laughs> you may be seated. Amen. Just kind of turn it this way. Oh, this thing is way too big for me. I had to kick it over to the side. I oh, okay. <laughs> ain't that tall. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo! Oh, I may just sit here and I don't have to preach or nothing. I don't just sit here and like, <laughs> just keep going. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Good stuff. That's good stuff. Uh, I, uh, I just want to, no, good. Good. I just, um, uh, my brain going five different directions. I'm just... <laughs> Amen. That's good stuff. Man. I appreciate you so much. Appreciate you so much. Um, I want to, uh, first of all, I just want to thank y'all for coming. It really means a lot to me. It does my heart good. Um, I feel blessed and honored to call you friends. I know pretty much every one of you here, at least a little bit. Girl, get, your, get up here. Come here. <laughs> you know, come here. Get up here. I saved you a seat. You good. I saved you five seats, but you good. It's Pastor Bice. Come on. Come on. Come on. I thought I saw you you out there. Amen. They had to drive, y'all. What is that, Jonesboro? Woo! Woo, stop breaching. I just want to um, thank y'all for coming. It really means a lot. It means a lot. It really does. And I just appreciate y'all so much. And, um, you know, to call you my friends and, and to come out and to support. And some of you are more, like clueless, but so I'm just going to clue you in. <laughs> but uh, Pastor Lee told it a little bit a while ago. I had actually kind of done an itinerant ministry a little while back. Minister Vanessa uh, was with me and some other people. And I kind of started off, but then... I was doing three kids and homeschooling and then was trying to get them in public. It was just, it was too much. And so I kind of backed off of it. 
a little bit. And, um, and so I helped, Pastor Lee wanted to plant another church, so I helped with the planting of the church, and I said, I told him, I said, okay, I'm here for you, but whew, it's time to go. <laughs> time, to, time to get moving. I, you know, because how many of you know if you're not obedient to what God's called you to do? He was, he's not going to stand beside me in heaven and answer for what God called me to do. And so I, I felt such a conviction. And I'm not going to talk about too much of it, but it was significant for me to have it on October the 10th. Because a few years ago, and there's so much going on, I can't even tell it all, because some of y'all know Feast of Tabernacles, all that stuff. It's just all of it played a part. It's so awesome. What God has confirmed and showed him is awesome. But um, a few years ago, I saw a message by Darlene Bishop. And uh, I sat there, and it was on October the 10th. I'm not sure what year it was, but it was October the 10th. <laughs> and I sat there, and I, she was ministering, and she, she said something to the effect that if you don't do what God called you to do, He's going to just use somebody else. And tears just flowed and flowed and flowed. And I said, God, don't let me fall just to sit down on what you've asked me to do. And so ever since that time, there's been such a conviction in my heart to go and to do ministry, um, itinerant ministry, which is, you know, I go out and I minister. And most of you actually are from places that I have ministered at. And so I just want to bless you for coming and supporting me. And so I just want to thank you for that. But uh, I just love you guys, and I'm just appreciative that you're here. And atmosphere, the way the Lord dropped in my spirit um, last minute. God, did God deal with last minute with anybody but me? I'm the only 11th hour person. I mean, it's, isn't it crazy? God always does that 11th hour thing. But he, uh, he gave it to me the last minute. He said, atmosphere. I was like, oh, yeah, I've been wanting to preach about atmosphere. You know, I've been wanting about atmosphere. And then he said, um, and I don't want you to just stop here. I want this to be an atmosphere, and I want you to do it on a regular basis. And so that's why I put the, the number on the end, the year, because it's going to be atmosphere 2015. Amen. And it's going to be it's going to be bigger. It's going to be more evenings. Amen. That's some good worship we had. Woo. We want to we want to create an atmosphere where things can happen. And so um, and so God just dropped in my spirit, you know, to, to do that. And so next year. We'll have another one. But in the meantime, I wanted to, to do some um, moments, some momentum moments. So I'll be contacting you so we can keep the momentum going. Amen? Yeah. And we can keep the momentum going, maybe even do a mini conference halfway through. And then next year, we'll do another conference and we'll do a couple of days and maybe some workshops or whatever. I don't know, whatever the Lord has to say. I had, uh, I had touched bases a couple of years ago with Keith Staten, if any of you know, member of the group commission. And I had uh, touched with him via email. That was a God thing. I don't even know how I got his email. <laughs> but I talked with him, and he said, oh, I'd love to come minister. So I said, well, brother, let me get there first. Hang on a second. <laughs> I feel, you know, I respect the anointing. Amen? So I want to, you know, build it up. But, but I did talk with his uh, producer the other day, and uh, he was like, well, he would love to come, I'm sure, and do it. So hopefully next year, y'all pray with me. Well, that'd be awesome, because if, no, if you haven't heard Keith State do worship, and lead worship, do some. Oh, so we're going to be there, too. I'm talking about the, the, the on solo. What are you talking about? crazy. <laughs> I'm talking about come and do some solo worship. You know, um, he does some awesome, awesome worship. So, anyway. Do I have to do I have some duct tape notes? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all forget me. Playing. We were playing. <laughs> I'm playing. I'm playing. Y'all know. Now my husband go back like that all the time. <laughs> You're pushing me. That's a private joke. Amen. But don't you? Let's give it up for Terrell, Pastor Terrell Taylor. Amen. Awesome. Now I have got to. Now, now I don't usually do this, but I'm gonna do it anyway, just because it's you. Y'all get him a chair just so he can you know, hang out up there. That'd be nice. <laughs> this is uh, Pastor Terrell Taylor. You're pastor of church over in Grayson called Live Free Church. But we know Terrell. That's why, you know, I'm going to flip back and forth. Do you know about Pastor Terrell or Pastor Taylor? When everybody calls you. <laughs> Brother. <laughs> um, we graduated from Oral Roberts University together. Amen. Uh, pastor Lee and myself and Pastor Terrell graduated from ORU 
So we're all in the same season, same time frame. I think they actually graduated the same year. And uh, I was a little slew-footed. And I had another, had another month to go. <laughs> another. And it, her, his wife isn't here, but she was a valedictorian of the undergraduate class and uh, gave an awesome, awesome word that day. And so I'm just thankful. I was talking to Terrell. He does, by the way, does teach lessons, keyboard lessons, and he's going to be teaching Judah, my little Judah. He's going to be teaching starting this week, and so I'm excited about that. But I was talking to him, and I was talking about keyboard and all this kind of stuff. I need a keyboard player. You know what I mean? He said, do you want me to just come, Kent? Well, you know, I'm not going to turn you down. <laughs> and I just bring some of my people. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and how many of you enjoyed that worship? Oh, awesome. That was some awesome worship. That's what I just, you know. But, you know, he's he's uh, been around the block a little bit. He's from Tulsa to, what, Pennsylvania and over here. No, I know you don't. I know. So I know. <laughs> but, you know, he's... he's uh, He's worked with a lot of people. He's worked with Donnie McClurkin and Israel Houghton. And, I mean, there's so, there's a list goes on and on. And Candy State, and there's so many I don't even know. But he's worked with so many people. And he's been a worship leader for like 500 to 5,000 member churches and so forth. So now he's a pastor, and that God's called him pastor. But uh, I'm thankful just to have him here. I feel blessed. Amen? Amen. Just to have him come. Amen. All right. Well, is anybody ready for a word? Amen. Amen. Anybody got one? <laughs> Amen. Oh. <laughs> God's just like that with me sometimes. You know. Turn with me to the book of Luke, if you would. Some of you wonder why I got this turn. This thing is just so big. It's in my way. Hopefully I don't hit it. Luke chapter 9. Real familiar scripture. Luke chapter 9. I'm going to start at verse 28. Before I get going, I may forget. Uh, Pastor Bice, make a hand while we just call it out in front of everybody. While I go. <laughs> Pastor Bice, um, I will be ministering at her uh, women's conference. Yay! Glory Girl. She done picked a good name, too. Put a little eye on it. Glory Girl. You know, it's cute. <laughs> I'll be ministering it's November the 13th through the 15th, right? And you can go through my website to get to it. Um, but, you know, and you can also Facebook. We're always, you know, putting it on Facebook. And uh, But avail yourself to it if you can. It'll be an awesome time where she does this every year, and she knows what she's doing. I learn from her. I watch her. You know, I'm learning. I'm learning. <laughs> I just learn. <laughs> but the Glory Girl Conference. And I'll be ministering on that Friday at noon, but she has other speakers coming in the evening on Thursday evening and Friday. If you want a Holy Ghost time, you know, avail yourself to come November 13th through the 15th. But you can go through my website. Is it, you know, I don't know your website. It's Desi, how can I get to it the Glory easiest way? GloryGirlConference.com. Okay, GloryGirlConference.com. And the glory has an I on it, not a Y. So GloryGirlConference.com. And uh, you can look it up. Check it out, and I'm sure she'd love to see you there, and I'd love to see you there as well. Amen? Amen. All right, Luke chapter 9, verse 28. And it came to pass about eight days after these sayings, he, talking about Jesus, took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. And his raiment was white and glistering. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, or Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. And when they were awake, they saw his glory. And the two men that stood with him. And it came to pass, as they departed from him, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here let us make three tabernacles, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah, not knowing what he was saying. While he thus spake, there came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared as they entered into the cloud. And there came a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my son, this is my beloved son, hear him. And when the voice was passed, Jesus was found alone. And I wanted to, um, you know, we're focusing on atmosphere, heaven on earth. 
But God gave me a, a title for a message tonight called The Game Changer. And we're going to learn about the game changer. Amen. Here, Jesus is on, is, is gone up, and we know the story of the, of the transfiguration. But this isn't Moses' first time on the mountain. Jesus is with him on the mountain. He's, he meets him there. But this isn't his first time. If we go back into Exodus, we'll see that Moses, most of us know the story, after God did what he did, after he opened the, opened the sea and all of that, he did what he did. Then here's Moses. Actually, the first thing happened God's presence came in the top of the mountain. And everybody saw it. But, God, but Moses is the one God called. But everybody saw it, but God called Moses up. So Moses goes up the mountain. Now, sometimes when God calls us, we're not aware of exactly how far we got to go. <laughs> but how many of you know that if you want to get to the game changer, you're going to have to do something that maybe you didn't want to do the first time? I'm sure that Moses, it wasn't an easy walk up a mountain. I don't climb mountains, but I just can tell you. I probably, but I can probably guess there's some boulders he had to cross. There's some slippery slopes that were around there. Some loose rock, maybe. Anybody ever lose their footing? And so sometimes in life we, we go, you know, God's calling us, and we, we believe God's calling us, and yet we, we can't get around the boulders and and we got to climb up this side, and we, and we have to step on this rock. And that was loose, and I lose my footing, and I grab hold. And, but, but God said, if you just keep coming, i got a game changer for you. So Moses goes up the mountain. And Moses communes with God. He meets with God. And God gives him the law. He gives him the Ten Commandments, and we all know the story. So he comes down. Now he's coming down the mountain. It's so much easier to come down the mountain. I was going to slide. <laughs> it's so much easier to come down the mountain. So I'm sure Moses is like, man, I got it. I got what God said. I'm, you know, I'm feeling good. Here it is. These people going. I'm okay. but, God, but God had already warned him. He said, get down there. Them people sinning. Them people doing some stuff down there. There are going to be people in your life that aren't going to understand how long you got to be spending with God. What kind of re atmosphere relationship that you have to have with God in order to bring them their game changer. But here he comes back down, and he has the two tablets, and he sees what they're doing. Now, he'd already known it. Now, I'm like, why didn't you just drop them up? You know, why didn't you just leave them up there? You know, <laughs> you've already been told. God already told you what they were doing. So here comes Moses carrying the tablets down the mountain. And here he sees them worshiping this cat. And he's like, what is going on with y'all? And he's asking Aaron, and thankfully Aaron was honest. Well, I told him. Get some gold, melt it, make you a cab. I know you want to slap him, maybe. I mean, you want to slap somebody sometimes. <laughs> and so he takes the stones, and what's he do? He throws them down and breaks them. Because we know Moses had a little anger issue. Nobody in here has an anger issue. But Moses, had, Moses had an anger issue. And so he, you know, I was all right with the cab. He, you know, knocked the cab over, you know, and. He went, go get them. Come kill them. You know, he went and got them people and killed them. Had them killed. Because they were in idolatry. Amen. Didn't have everybody killed, but he had a lot of people killed. Right. <laughs> because they were in idolatry. But he didn't have to throw the stones down, but he did. And so the next time, God says, come up here. <laughs> so here goes Moses. Anybody been around a second time? Yeah. Mm. So here goes Moses over the boulders. Up on a slippery slope, little loose rock, and he goes back up the mountain, and he gets with God. And here's what God tells him. God says, okay, uh, you know them stones you broke? Uh, since you broke them, carve them out the, out the rock yourself. Now, the first time, God carved them out. How I many of you know if we're just obedient the first time, it would make life so much easier. <laughs> but we don't obey the first time. So then the second time comes, <laughs> and now he has to carve out the rock. Read it. It's in there. <laughs> right in the word of God, right? <laughs> it's in there. And so it says he had to carve it out and he had to hone out the stone. So he had to carve out the tablets himself. I didn't know that. I was like, wow, this has some work. I'm going to have no, you know, chisels and stuff back then. I don't know how he got that rock. <laughs> but then here's what he does. He calls him up the second time. He says, carve out the stone. Now, go down there, and then in the morning, come back up. <laughs> Why 
can I just sleep here? Because you don't know nothing about the game changer yet. Until you know about the game changer, go on back down with them. So Moses goes back down <laughs> and goes back up the next morning. And he goes back up and then God writes on the stones the same thing he wrote the first time. And then Moses, now Moses is communing with God. Something transpired on that third mountain trip <laughs> with, with Moses and God. Amen? Because it didn't happen the first time. It happened the second time when in the communion. It was the third time he made the trip, but it was the second time of communion when he communed with God and God gave him the, the Ten Commandments. And so he's up there communing with God, the Bible says. And then when he came down this time, guess what he had? He, the Bible says that he shone with the glory of God. Glory is the game changer. God's glory is the game changer. It's the thing that's going to get you to win, that, win the game. Now here, he comes down with the game changer. His face is shining because he's communed with God and the glory is on him. And so now things start to transpire. Now set the tabernacles. Build the tabernacles. Build a tabernacle for God. And so he has all this instruction. And he makes the tabernacle. And the people now can meet with God. God doesn't just come to the top of the mountain. But because Moses has the game changer, now he comes to the tabernacle. And now he's willing to meet with the people. Because he wasn't willing up there. He'll get the people away. If they even touch the mountain, they're dead. I don't, don't even let them touch the mountain. I'm going to kill them. <laughs> but then he puts a tabernacle in there. But the people, because of the glory that was on Moses when he came down, backed away from him. And got a little, they got a little fearful because they saw something. Have you ever been with God and somebody sees something on you? And, and you almost wonder what's wrong with you because they're backing away. But it's because you've been with God. And you got the game changer. And when you have the game changer, guess who wins the game? And so, and so Moses had the game changer. He comes and he got to cover up the game. <laughs> got to hide your game sometimes. <laughs> if you got game, amen. <laughs> you got to hide it. You got to hide it sometimes. You got to cover it sometimes. Because everybody's not going to understand how many trips up the mountain you took to get it. And quite frankly, may not deserve to see it. Because the shine is on you. Somebody say, it's my time to shine. My time to shine with a game changer. Amen? It's a game changer. Now watch this. So then the tabernacle is built, and the people are outside. Now they can come and meet God. They don't. <laughs> only Joshua is the only one bold enough to come to the tabernacle in his presence. And, he, and the Bible says that Moses leaves and Joshua stays. Because it takes a warrior in the presence to take it to the next level. Because we know Joshua took it after Moses and took it to another level. And so it took a warrior in God's presence, a warrior with a game changer, in order to make a transition. Now let's fast forward a couple thousand years. Now we come to our text. Now here is Moses and Elijah, and they meet with Jesus, I love this, in an atmosphere of God's glory. Moses and Elijah come down on a mountain. Just like God did with Moses. Moses and Elijah come down. Jesus grabs his close fellows, his closest three, James, John, Peter, Peter, James, and John, and grab it and say, let's go up the mountain. But I guarantee you, their mountain was a lot easier than Moses' mountain. A little bit more grace. Come on, somebody. A <laughs> little easier walk because the Mount, Mount Tabor is actually an easier mountain than the one that the Mount Sinai. So now we got an easier walk, not easy, but easier because it's covered with grace. So now we're on the top, we're going up the mountain. And Jesus is going up to pray. And the Bible says what? The disciples fall asleep. Well, they were notorious for falling asleep <laughs> during prayer. Anybody been there? Wow. Ever fell asleep trying to read the word? 
We fall asleep trying to, trying to pray, trying to press, trying to read the word. And here come the enemy. Woo! They're sleepy now. <laughs> but the three disciples fell asleep. But let me tell you something. What happens when slumber comes upon us is we miss an opportunity. Because they did not see the initial manifestation of the glory of Elijah and Moses on the mountain. They saw it after it was already there. Because the Bible said they woke up and saw a glory. They didn't wake up and then saw a glory coming down out the sky and then it appeared. Jesus was already there talking with Moses and Elijah. But the Bible says that they fell asleep. Anybody ever fell asleep on you? Sometimes, you know, you feel like you're taking your best pals with you. I'm caring that going with me. My family, my friends, they're going with me. I'm going to get the game changer. And they fall asleep on you. <laughs> they step to the side. They don't fulfill what you had already in your heart felt that you wanted them to do. I'm sure Jesus was disappointed that the three disciples couldn't stay away. Because the Bible said that as Jesus prayed, Moses and Elijah appeared. Because he hadn't yet fallen asleep. We can't afford missed opportunities. Living in the days we live, if we want to see our loved ones saved, we want to see our friends and family, we can't afford to fall asleep. And so they fell asleep, they woke up, and they saw the glory. They had gone up to this high place, which is a place of worship, right? The mountains, there were places of worship. Some of them were idolatrous worship, but it also led to spiritual worship of God. You go up to a high place. That's why God called them up to a high place, a place of worship. Calling them up to a place in his glory, a place of worship. And so they went up to a high place of worship and fell asleep. But as Jesus prayed, Moses and Elijah appeared. And I love this. I love, I love this text because sometimes if you pay attention, you can see more than you saw before. Amen? Amen. And so God's glory showed up. God's glory is the game changer, right? God's glory is the game changer. So heaven touched earth at the Mount of Transfiguration. When God came down during Moses' time, heaven came to earth. Because where is God's throne? So if he comes, so heaven came to earth. And so in the days of Jesus, when he, in the transfiguration, heaven came to earth. We always say, Lord, let heaven touch the earth. And what we're singing, we love it so. We want God to touch the but that's where God's glory is. Yeah. Yeah. When he touches the earth, when he comes to visit. But you know what I noticed is that he didn't come all the way down. We have to go up. Yeah. God wants to do some things in us, but we're not willing. We go, Lord, meet me at the point of my need, and we sit here. Wow. Instead of saying, Lord, I need you to meet me, but while you're coming my way, I'm going to come your way. Yeah. And I'm going to I'm going to start climbing. I'm going to start stepping over boulders. I'm going to start stepping uh, on rocks that may not be firm. But I'm going to keep going and keep pressing and keep pushing up that mountain until I get to a place of worship. Until I get to a place of glory. And I'm in an atmosphere of heaven. Because everything can be changed in an atmosphere of heaven. Everything. So the glory is the game changer. Because when you get in heaven in the glory, right? Then things change. Now, here's how changed they are. First of all, you got the dead showing up in the glory. <laughs> Moses and Elijah done passed away. But, but there's a resurrection of some sort going on, amen. <laughs> but they show up in the glory. Why is that? I'm going to tell you something. Jesus, I love this. Jesus stepped over into glory. He was praying. He steps over into glory into the game changer. And he has a discussion with Moses and Elijah about his death. And when he comes out of it, that the disciples had woken up while he was still in the glory. And then when they made, a, made mention, then he comes and it says that we saw Jesus only. So when he's in the glory, here's what he did. He reached into eternity. Moses and Elijah represent eternity into the heavens. He reaches into eternity. He talks about his death. He grabs hold of destiny. 
and then he brings it into his present reality. So when we get into glory, come on somebody, somebody go with me, man. I'm going to repeat it. When we get into glory, we step over into where heaven meets the earth. We step over into glory. We step over into eternity. We take hold of purpose and destiny and we bring it into our reality. Jesus said, I was talking about death. They heard him talking about death. That's his future. Hadn't happened yet. He talked about his future with someone from his past. God is saying he'll take your past and he'll let you grab hold of your future. And they're going to meet together and come into the present. Amen. He's going to take that path, even the mess ups and the mistakes, and he's going to fix it. Somebody say fix it. He's going to fix it, and then he's going to let you get a vision for your destiny, for your purpose, and then you're going to grab hold of that if you're in the glory, and then step out and bring it into your present reality. He was giving us a way to reach into what he has called us to and manifest it in the earth. The way he did it, though, the way he did see, he, he didn't have to do it that way. He could have just said, you know what, ask me, and I'll tell you what your future is. Because he did with Paul, Peter, he told him how he was going to die. <laughs> or he told him when he was getting old age, he said, you know, this is what's going to happen to you. So he could foretell a lot. But he did foretell purpose and, and destiny for each individual person. But he gave us a, a picture of how to do it. If you'll just step over in glory, if you'll get over into glory, I will tell you about your purpose and your destiny. I'll have a meeting with you about your past. And then you can step back and bring it into your present reality. Amen. Woo! I want to reach up into heaven. You said it earlier. By the Spirit, he didn't even know. Reach up into heaven and grab hold and bring it. Out of that atmosphere into this atmosphere. Because God wants to do what's in heaven on the earth. But he's only going to do it if you get in the glory. But you got to get in the glory. You got to climb the mountain. You got to go around it a couple times if you have to. You got to let some friends go on and fall asleep. Let them go on fall asleep. Let them wake up when you're already in your glory. <laughs> when you're already in your purpose. When you're already in your destiny. And let them wake up. Well, wait a minute. Can we, can, we, can we put three tabernacles down? Can we, can we build three tabernacles? Don't you know, Peter, that you are the tabernacle? Amen. That we live in a day when God can meet us if we'll just get in worship and get in an atmosphere that is conducive for him to move. If we don't take the time, he won't show up. Amen. We got to take the time with God. Moses communed with him. Jesus was already walking it. And he steps over and he has a talk with somebody who's already been there. Moses are, Jesus had a talk with Moses. Moses already been there. Some of us hard-headed folk, too, we got too hard-headed to listen to anybody else. But if somebody's been where you want to go, it's a good thing to open up your ears and listen. God even said when Peter started talking, he said, hold up. Don't you start building no tabernacles. Let me tell you who you're talking about. You want to build a tabernacle for Moses and Elijah, they ain't the one get ready to die for you. Don't build no tabernacles. What I want you to do is hear him. This is my son. Hear him. And so God is calling us as a church to come up into his glory. He's not going to bring his glory all the way down the mountain. You got to be willing to step over obstacles that are in your way. Willing to put people to the side who don't want to go with you. And you got to be willing to carve out a stone because you broke it. Amen. You might not want to do the work, but God said you ain't going to get it unless you do the work. 
So unless you put the time in, God not going to give it back to you. Amen. You got to be willing to get in there. Hallelujah. So we're going to reach up. Amen. We're going to reach up into our future. Grab hold of our purpose and our destiny. And we're going to bring it down. Come on, somebody to bring it down. Because glory is the game changer. Glory is the game changer. It's in the glory. Jesus said in John 17, he said, I pray that they be one. But he also talked about the glory. He said, the glory that I had with you, Lord, let me have that glory again. Not only that, but God, give them the glory I got. Yeah, let, me go, let me go there. Y'all, y'all like, I don't know if the word said that. Okay. Let me go there. John 17. Watch this. John chapter 17, verse 5, and I'm going to jump to verse 22. Verse 5 says, And now, O Father, glorify thou with me, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Yeah. That's some glory right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not just with any kind of glory, because there's a man's glory. Jesus wasn't asking for that kind of glory. He's asking for the glory he had before. Which was all glory. Amen. Give that back to me, Lord. That's what I'm asking for. And then he says in verse 22. I in them and you in me. And that, that they may be made perfect. Oops, verse 22, sorry. And the glory which you gave me. Somebody say the glory which you gave Jesus. It says I have given them. He already gave it to us. <laughs> he, already, he already gave it to us. That they may be one, even as we are one. What can God do when a unified body gets together under the anointing and in the glory of worship? What can he do when the church stops fighting and bickering and complaining and stop doing all the stuff they're doing? And gets together in one accord. And gets over into the glory. Because that's when God shows up. The Holy Spirit came when the glory was in the house. Because the people were what? On one accord. All got the same mind. Same heart. Same same focus. The same motive. Hello. (laughs) Same motive. And then... The power of the Holy Spirit. Heaven again. Yes. Come to earth. Thank you, God. Amen. Heaven, heaven. Touching earth. Yes. When God fills you with his spirit, he fills you with heaven yes. and heaven's glory. Yes. But what are we going to do with heaven's glory? Yes. What are we going to do with heaven's glory? Are we going to just put it to the side? Or are we going to actually do something with it? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Come on, stand around feet. Yes. Come on, somebody say the glory. Yes. Is the game changer. You want your situation to change? You want your circumstances to change? Do you need a breakthrough? A next level blessing? (laughs) Guess how you're going to get it? (laughs) You're going to get it through the game changer. You're going to get it in the glory. You're going to get it in the high place of worship. You're going to get it in prayer. There's no way around it. I know we want to get around prayer. I know we want to get around reading the word and getting in worship. But guess what? If you want glory, you can't get around it. You're going to go up that mountain and slide right back down. Go up that mountain and slide right back down. Until you finally get it through your head. Amen. (laughs) That the glory is only going to come so far. And then God is calling you up into it. Just as if he had to call Moses, if he had to call Jesus to come up, you got to come up. I got to come up. Amen. Because the glory cloud is a cloud. Ain't that here. It's up here. Amen. So we got to come up. Somebody say come up. We got to come up in the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you, God, for your glory. We thank you, God, for the game changer. The thing that changes every situation and circumstance. If we just have your presence, God, your glory, everything can be changed. We thank you, Jesus. The Bible says that the fullness of joy is found in the presence of the Lord. 
when I'm talking about glory, I'm talking about his presence. I'm not just talking about, yes, God's in us. I'm, not, I'm talking about the manifested presence of God. The glory of God. Because in that presence is fullness of joy. And pleasures, right? At his right hand forevermore. Everything you want, healing, is in his presence. Healing. Deliverance is in his presence. Everything you need can be found in his presence. That's why, to me, the presence of the Lord is the most important thing. That's why I say we can just sit here and worship. <laughs> because when the presence of the Lord comes, everything else is taken care of. We don't have to do anything. His presence takes care of us. Oh, we glorify your name, Jesus. Come on, let's listen to our hearts up in worship for a moment. Oh, God. Mm. Yes, Lord. Love your presence. Yes, Lord. We your people. Come on, we want to give him reverence. Yes. Yes, Lord. that I want to do that I feel like God has put on my heart to do whenever we have an event. And it's hard to do with the more people you have. So we can definitely do it today because not quite as many, but um, we want to minister. And I asked my husband to come with me because we love the gifts of the Spirit. We want people to be set free and delivered and moved upon. And so we're going to share uh, the mic with each other. If he has a word for you, he'll give it to you. If I have a word, I'll give it to you. Um, and then we'll just move. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God says that that heaviness has been on your life. You have had substantial, not unusual heaviness. You've been concerned, and it even went over to a little worry. God says, I'm waiting on you on the other end. He's already there. You've been calling on him to fix that situation. But God says, I'm already there because I'm at the beginning and the end at the same time. Hallelujah. God says he's going to bring you through it. This time you won't fall. This time you will get through it. This time you shall really be the head and not the tail. My God, you're going to be the lender and not the borrower this time. This time you shall be an overcomer because this is the time that you're operating in the game changer and the glory is upon your life even as we speak. Glory. Glory. Glory to glory. In the name of Jesus. Oh, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta plug into the atmosphere. You remember, you got to dig a little bit. You gotta climb a little bit. Whoa, yeah. 
Glory. Glory. couple right here. This couple. Hallelujah. God says, because you pressed your way to get here, that thing that you're waiting to happen this week, he said it's done in Jesus' name. You knew you needed to be in the atmosphere to get that thing done. Jesus said it's done this week in Jesus' name. Amen. They know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, come on, give God some praise. Come on, give him some praise. You gotta, you gotta invest. You gotta invest to get a return. You gotta invest into this atmosphere. You gotta invest with praise. You gotta invest with faith. somebody watching right now I want you to know that though you're not here tonight the same presence of God that's here tonight is up on your life right now you do not have to get that divorce no you don't have to take it to the mountain where Jesus is take it into the glory don't take the easy route out God can fix it in his presence and he will do it if you take it there in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Glory to your name Jesus. I haven't seen you in a long while girl. But you know what I saw you a while ago and I said the Lord put on my heart to tell you. He sees you. Every time you lift his name up, every time you worship, every time you open your book, he sees your heart. You, you've been through some things. You've gone through some stuff. You probably haven't had any contact with you further through more than that. And some people don't even know what you're going through because you don't tell them. You don't tell everybody everything. God said he's good. He's When I mean heaviness physically, you've been feeling some tightness. Yeah. Who's that? There's several. Come here, come here. Amen. Come here. Hallelujah. I want y'all to stay in faith in Jesus' name. It might be more than one of y'all. Just come. Hallelujah. Just face me. God is getting ready to release that heaviness. You didn't tell me about it, but I'm it is because of stress. It's because of stress. God wanted you to come so it can, you can be released from that stress. In this atmosphere, you will leave here. Both of you, you will leave here healed in Jesus' name. How do you know that? You know that by faith. You walk out of here by faith. You don't pay attention to more, no, any more symptoms anymore. You just, you already there. Because that's what it requires of you to get your healing. It requires according, that's why Jesus said, according to your faith. And faith believes in stuff that you don't see. You don't feel. You can't even touch it. None of the five senses are present when you have faith. Y'all hear what I just said? None of the five senses are present because we've learned how to live by the five senses. Touch, smell, see, sight, all that. Now it's going to be just, I believe God's word. Hallelujah. Lift your hands up. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
Oh, in the name of Jesus. There's power in that name. There's healing in that name. There's glory in that name. In the name of Jesus, cease the stress, the pain, the heaviness. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where is it at? Where is it at? Oh God, in the name of Jesus, muscles come back into alignment. In the name of Jesus, I don't know if you did it working or whatever, but in the name of Jesus, heal, uh, heal, make brand new in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, release the pain so she'll know that her faith is not in vain. And she'll know that you are real, God. Lord, you'll never let us down. It's on you. It's not on me, God. It's your glory. Hallelujah. Not mine. It is according to your glory, your glory, your glory, your glory, your glory, your glory. Manifest in Jesus' name. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Oh. Hallelujah. Hey, you need that hand to worship, so you need. You got to need that hand to worship without pain. Hallelujah. There it is. There you go. Just worship him right there. presence we've been struggling trying to get there trying to get that worship and that prayer time and that word and you just want to get in his glory i believe god will give you a moment right here right now and if you want that i want you to come up here we're going to pray for you that god will just touch you in a special way to touch you with his glory to make you hungry hungry for it. hallelujah he wants you more than you even want him. And he'll do it for you. You're stepping towards that mountain. When you come up here, you're stepping towards that mountain. And he'll meet you there. And I believe that. I believe that. Hallelujah. Woo. I want you, first of all, just to close your eyes and lift your hands and worship. Hallelujah. You're so good, Lord. You're so good. You're so good. Come on, just bask in for a moment. Because he's getting ready to do something on you. He's getting ready to shine his glory. He's getting ready to shine his glory on you. He's getting ready to give you just a taste, just a touch. And it's going to make you hungry and thirsty for him. He's gonna pour. We're going to go around. I just want to go here and lay hands on him. And God is just, I always believe God's going to touch you. I believe God's going to touch you. Fill him with your glory. Fill him with your glory, God. Fill him with your glory, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Give him a moment, God. Like no other, Lord. Do it in him, Jesus. Do it in him, Jesus. She needs it. She needs it, Lord. Fill her with hunger. 
hunger and thirst, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. You've been stepping so far. You've been running so long for Jesus. But you ain't got tired yet. Don't you let the devil tell you you got tired. You ain't got tired yet. He's still doing it through you. He's still moving through you. You don't always see it. People don't always tell you. But he's doing it through you. And when he's called you to something, sometimes you can't rely on what people come back and, and giving you any kind of nothing. Because sometimes folk can get blessed and run, and you'll never see him again. But he's using you. You've been stepping towards him. You've been running for him. He's never failed you yet. And he's not going to fail you. Hallelujah. Touch your Jesus. Fill up. Give her, give her a refilling, Lord. A refilling. A refilling. Hallelujah. So you gotta say, let go and let go. Let go. Let go. Yeah, let go and let go. Yeah. Come on, it's about letting go. Yeah. Yeah, God. Lord, she wants more of you. Help her to let go and to let you have it. Let you have your way in her life completely, fully. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah, Jesus. An ailment. Just a snap of the finger. Bam. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Hallelujah. And even as I lay hands, Pastor Kevin, we would lay hands on you. One put a thousand to fight, two put ten thousand. It is yours now. In the name of Jesus. Ah. Power of the Holy Ghost. Fall afresh upon her life she shall live and not die says the Lord says the Lord says the Lord says the Lord glory 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 yeah 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 yeah
drawer in your glory. Pull her, God, into that glory. She wants it. She's so reverential of you, God. She really wants what you want. So touch her, Lord. Look on your children and call them special, Lord. You know her by name. You know every hair on her head. You know every need and every desire. Pray you fill her in Jesus' name. Yeah. God says, this is what God says to you. You're special, not for what you do. You're special because of who you are and who you are. You don't ever have to earn that. You felt like something could make you more special. Nothing can make you more special. Not even an education. Not even a title. You're special just because of him. Hallelujah. And I don't know why I'm saying that, but I do know this, that you are special. Hallelujah. Because you're connected to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise, Lord. Hallelujah. Refresh you. From the top of his head to the soles of his feet, God, we speak the power of God to come over him like he's never experienced you before. Oh, like he's never experienced you before. Show him something new, something fresh, God. Pour your glory out on him in Jesus' name. Your glory, God. Your glory, Lord. Your glory. Rest on him, God. Rest on him. Hallelujah. Let what has been deposited in your spirit tonight? Let go. Is something that will sprout in your worship. Your worship could never be the same because you don't have just an ordinary worship, a stereotype worship. You have a prototype worship. A prototype worship is one that is not complete in its full structure. It is one that still have an open end because God is still doing something with it. Yeah. Hallelujah. You're not going to be able to fit in a box that's already been carved out. Don't look for the box. Look for the open end circle of God doing something supernatural at another dimension. You can't go back into that box of what you that's comfortable you can't go into the box that's usual you got to go into the, the circle of unusual the prototype type of worship you're a worship leader you got to go into that whatever god wants you to do not what man wants you to do not what you're comfortable with go into the atmosphere even as you heard it tonight it's been deposited into you withdraw by faith Hallelujah. 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 A fresh, a new, the supernatural, the supernatural, the kingdom on earth, the kingdom in you. Hallelujah. The prototype worship, the prototype worship leader. Hallelujah. You can't be put in a box. You're not just a Chris Tumlin. You are something better than that. You're something greater than that. You've got to just let go and let God use you because the people around you, they're not used to what you're receiving tonight. Hallelujah. They need that. There's not a want, it's a need. Hallelujah. We give you praise, God, for it in my son's life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, I pray 
rage is full. First of all, full physical restoration. You already done it in her, done it over. Got her here to get in the glory. Get in the glory. Got you here, then. He healed you to get you here. Hallelujah. Thank you for your glory. I pray you take her to a next level. Next level, God. Higher up the mountain, Lord. Higher up the mountain, God. Take her up, Lord. Next level anointing. Because you got something for her to do. She's going to need every bit of oil she can get. But not everybody can go where you be in and where you're going to go. God's going to take you back. He'll take you forward. Lord. I've got that one. He's going to take you. You're like, I don't want nobody to He's going to take you to take you forward. Because you got a people you got to reach. With the glory. That's all over me on that one. Yeah. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. So good, Lord. So good. Everything we 
Pastor Kim talked about going to your past. You thought, man, I don't want my past. But she talked about going into your past and merging that with your future. You know, counselors would tell you that you got to go back to the place where you got off track. And then they try to counsel you to get back on track. This is what the Holy Ghost wants to do. He want to literally overcome your past with your future. And whatever your past, being that it was negative, God's got so much positive stuff in the future that it's going to outweigh your negative. That's mathematics. When you got more positive, you got more positive over the negative. And no matter what the negative was, it's going to end up positive. Hallelujah. And I know how much pain you suffer. Stuff that you've been through. Ups and downs and relationships not working and this not and that not working and my God, this not working and, and even even some some of your parents were there for you. Even your parents let you down. The Bible says when mother and father forsake you, he'll bear you up and take you up. He's your mother. He's your father. They even let you down. You don't even know who to trust. So much pain. So much pain. But God interprets your tears. And he says, I'm getting ready to give you the solution that you were looking for all the time. But you got to now say, Lord, I give you my whole heart. You want to do that tonight? Put your hands up and say, Lord, I give you my full heart. I want to be saved right now, today, come into my heart. I believe that you died for my sins, for my past. I believe that you rose from the grave for my sins. My sins are washed away. My past is no longer Receive, Lord, a newborn baby in your kingdom. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I don't know if you were saving that, but I know one tonight you're saved because your tears tell me you're saved. Your heart now is really into Jesus now. Oh! Come on, the Bible says they rejoice when one soul came to heaven. One soul! Angels are celebrating because of you tonight. Oh. You're in this church, we're going to make sure you're disciple. Make sure you grow. You're gonna make sure you don't go back to your past. You got an excellent future. My God. Have you been blessed tonight? Yeah. Woo, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We thank you, God. For your atmosphere shifting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. He's good. He's good. So good. The game changer. You know what a game changer is? I forgot to read that definition, didn't I? Hang on. Y'all be like, all the guys know what a game changer is. Those of us who don't like sports. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, who don't do sports? <laughs> Let me watch, watch this. The game changes a newly introduced element or factor that changes an existing situation or activity in a significant way. <laughs> Y'all got that at the end. <laughs> your game changer is the globe. Get your shine on. Oh, y'all country folk know what I'm talking about. Amen.
<laughs> don't act like y'all ain't heard that song. I don't even listen to it and I heard it. <laughs> get your, but get the shine of God's glory on so others can see it and want it. Be a game changer. Let the glory get on you and you be a game changer. Come on, somebody say, I'm a game changer. I'm a game changer. I'm a game changer. Woo! Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We're done. Amen. But I wanted to, um, you know, I just wanted to share with you. There's a table going out. Um, I have a book out there. Most of you have it. But, you know, <laughs> it's a book on prayer. It's, a, it's just a little bee book, so if you don't like to read, it's good for you. <laughs> I wrote it for folk who don't like to read. No, I love to read. No, but um, if you like small groups, it's good for small groups. But uh, at the table, and I know some of y'all going to be mad at me. You ain't going to be mad at me, are you? But I'm going to do it for $7 tonight. So y'all who pay 10 we like, we could have just waited. But, but I, you know, I do sell them for $7 tonight at the table. And Pastor Terrell has some seats. Are they out there? You look at me like crazy. Oh, gee, God. But he does have CDs. Amen. So all you got to do is let somebody know. <laughs> That's easy. <laughs> Terrell said, two R's, two L's. Taylor.com. <laughs> Not the what? There's a football player or something. There's somebody that plays ball or something. No, he said Terrell Taylor. There's my full Terrell Taylor. Up. Some dog on ball player keeps coming. Oh. Or maybe it's a rapper. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so TerrellTaylor.com. He's got a live CD. The most recent one's alive. It's really, yeah. Uh, I checked some of that out. Uh, so anyway, you can check that out. We'd love for you to be blessed. Amen. And uh, I was going to put uh, Pastor Bice on the spot, but she might she might hurt me. So I'm on. <laughs> Pass the bicep. Don't oh, she try to hide back there? <laughs> you know what? Come here. <laughs> she is so funny. I love this girl. It don't have a V in it. I love this girl. She's so sweet. I love this girl. She is so awesome. Get over here. Wait a minute. You ain't going nowhere. I ain't done for her. <laughs> this girl's awesome. Let me just say something. Some women just know how to do stuff. This woman is, she's a pastor. Her husband supports her fully, committed. He's in ministry as well with her. She pastors, she's a prophetess. She puts on these conferences. She sings. So, uh, would you just sing us that? <laughs> ah, yeah. I thought she said, she said, I made it through the singing. I saw something on Facebook. I said, I'm going to put on Anything, girl, don't matter. It can be bad or whatever you want to do. We're all going to be leaving, but I just wanted to <laughs> Amen. I, I'm trying to hide the little nails. I didn't have a chance to get them done. Amen. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Awesome service on tonight. Amen. We bless you. We bless the man of God tonight. Amen. And we're all leaving here with the glory on us. The game changer. Amen. Please understand that the game never changes. You change the game. If you plug into something that's negative and God's not in it, you change the game. And while you're plugged into something positive, you lift your hands and you say, give me you. Because everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Give me you. Because everything else can wait. Has anybody ever been to that place? Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Oh, Jesus.
hallelujah. He's a game changer. He's a game changer. your glory is here we stepped into another place and we've learned that your glory is the game changer the game changer Can I just welcome y'all to the glory? The King changed. Y'all gotta leave because you, you won't forget this sermon right here. Who is he? Can you just wrap your arms around? will take care of itself. Your situation will take care of itself. In the glory. In the glory. And when they wake up, they're going to see you in the glory. <laughs> and they missed out on the opportunity. 
Amen. Now, y'all be blessed. We be staying here all night worshiping, okay? Y'all be blessed. But you know what? We're going to have some momentum moments, little bitty clips. And I want y'all to connect with me. And next year, it's going to be bigger, better, and the atmosphere filled even more. Amen? Hallelujah. Come on, love on somebody with your glory as we leave. Hallelujah. Come on, bless in Jesus' name. Amen.